Hi guys, so another video on the TX16S. As you can see, we've got here the Mark II opened up, and there's two modifications that are made to this radio. The first one is the Bluetooth module. Um, as you can see, I've got uh, an HM10 or HC10, whatever. It'll be in the video description. It's something something 10. Uh, it's a Bluetooth module that supports uh, Bluetooth um, 4.0 and Bluetooth low energy. So this is what I use in order to get my telemetry uh, onto, I don't know, like an Android tablet or something like that. And the other mod that I'm doing is I just had a friend print out um, a custom uh, speaker holder. Uh, so where's my speaker? There it is. So the speaker will go in here. And the reason why I did that is because I want to add, as you can see, there's another wire here, and I wanted to add a GPS unit um, to the radio, which will sit right underneath the logo, the grill of the logo. Um, I initially had the GPS unit mounted at the top here, uh, which worked out all right to some degree, but yeah, I mean, you know, going through plastic, the GPS wasn't really that good, and um, it's only good when the radio is like standing upright, and then it's like, you know, on the bottom, sitting on the bottom. So that's not great. And um, basically, to get this to work, you can't use this part, because as you can see, it's quite thick. Um, it makes sure, obviously, that the sound is coming out nicely, but on the other hand, it's got uh, quite a bit of um, space here at the bottom, and I think, I'm pretty sure, that if I remove that space, um, it will work fine. So I uh, created a little STL file, um, again, uh, link in the description. So that basically sits right there. The only reason why you need to have something here, I mean, it would be easiest to just remove the speaker because it's not going to be very effective anyway, but the only reason why I wanted to have that there is because there is two screws on the other side which fit through and they actually screw onto that part um, slash the underside of this and I just wanted to make sure that these two screws have something to grip onto I mean, you could just leave it there really it doesn't really matter that much or you could put like just some bit of plastic or you know uh, some some glue that's gonna hold it something that's removable but I wanted to have it nice and uh, clean and um, yeah, also, whilst I have that there, you can see there is also a tiny bit, I don't know if my camera is going to focus on this, but there's a little bit of that Gorilla Tape right on the button, uh, on the power button, and that makes sure that when this thing here pushes down on it, it's nice and soft. Uh, the same thing I've done to these buttons underneath here, and to uh, the, I think that's the model button, yeah, the model button underneath right there. Um, so yeah, I'll put everything together and I'll show you how it looks like when it's done. Um, yeah, be back in a second. Alright, so the speaker's in, and as you can see, it's quite a lot further down than what we had uh, previously. Um, and another thing that I wanted to mention is with regards to mounting the GPS underneath here. Um, I'm using Gorilla. You guessed it, my favorite. Um, and the way that I'm mounting this is basically I've just cut out a, a strip of that Gorilla Tape um, and I've curled it up like this with the curl, well in, in this case as you're looking at it, uh, the, f the last part of the curl is actually stuck onto that little bit of PCB that's left and the same will be on the other side. And the reason why I've done it like this is because I want to leave a very small gap between the patch of the antenna itself and that plastic, that perforated stuff. So we want that to be perforated, that's good, that means we get better signal. Um, but on the other hand, uh, we don't want the antenna to be making any contact with any other parts. So we don't want to, we don't want that piece um, touching the antenna. Um, it does make a difference. So I've had, I've tried it when I was trying it over here. It was at one point touching the plastic. It never received any satellites. 
um, even though it's plastic and technically radio waves should be passing through it with ease, it does make a difference. I guess it probably screws up the frequency of the receiving patch antenna and then it doesn't work. So um, the way to get around it is to make sure that you've got a little bit of a gap right there and I'm going to um, yeah, assemble this and I'll be back in a second showing you how it looks like when it's in. Alright guys, so I've just assembled the uh, second motherboard that's up top here. And um, just something to highlight uh, before we go on. If you're adding a Bluetooth module, uh, you should just keep in mind that the TX and RX on this port, as well as the TX and RX on this port, are not labeled correctly. Uh, they are basically swapped. So RX should be TX and TX should be RX. So when you do connect a Bluetooth module, like this one here, the one that I have, um, you should definitely have um, TX to TX and RX to RX. That's number one. And number two, um, again, I have used some Gorilla Glue to just put a little pad underneath uh, this Dupont connector. And basically, the pins are open like this because these are two millimeter spacing, whereas this one is, I think, 2.54 millimeters or 2.45. Anyway, um, the spacing is slightly different, which means that these won't fit perfectly if you try it with like a standard one that's got the plastic coming out on top. So long story short, um, I've left them like this. They're fine. They work fine. Um, and in just a second, when I flip the radio, you'll see that the Bluetooth module will blink from underneath and you'll be able to see that. So yeah, um, my advice is if you ever want to remove this, don't bother soldering it in. Um, you're doing a solder job with um, maybe a good grounded uh, soldering iron, maybe not a good one. This one, for example, yeah, it's good, but whatever, it caused some damage on other components already. So you don't want to accidentally fry your TX and RX lines or maybe just fry the processor as well due to some high voltage output that you don't know is grounded somehow and so on and so forth. So, you know, my advice is don't solder anything if you don't have to. And in this case, you don't. So just pull out these 90 degree pins from your, um, you know, from, from the standard like row of 20 and just plug them in. They don't touch anything on the other side, so you don't have to worry about it. If you want, you can shorten them just to be sure, just to be on the safe side. And um, yeah, I'll flip the radio around in just a second and then we can see the GPS working. All right, so the radio's on. I haven't plugged in uh, the transmitter module, the 4-in-1 module. It's not necessary, we don't need it at the moment. And if you have a look here underneath, you see a little blinking light. Um, for the BN220, you should see this light. It's, I think, once every second or once every two seconds. And that means that it's basically waiting for uh, a signal. And once you see a red LED uh, lighting up, that means that it's um, captured the signal. So this is nice. It's nice that this is perforated because we can see the status LED. And once, once this works, once we have a GPS lock, not only will you be able to see the fact that you've got a GPS lock by the fact that you'll see these um, northings and eastings coordinates, but you will also have a red light that will shine through here. I know that the LED lights are facing down, but because we've added that uh, Gorilla tape, it's taking a part of the reflection and it's reflecting it back to us. So that's kind of useful. And if we have a look, um, you can set you can, if you wanted to, you can set this up on a, on a separate screen. I've got it on a separate screen, but we can see that it will also tell us once we have a GPS lock. Now, obviously, because I'm inside a building, I don't have a GPS lock, but I've tested it out in the field and it works fine. Um, so, yeah. Uh, also, one last thing. Make sure that your baud rate of your GPS is uh, 9600 and... Afterwards, when you go into the uh, system menu, you have to enable the GPS. So you go into hardware and then you scroll all the way down and see on AUX2, we've got telemetry mirror 
and on aux one we've got gps and that's that's basically what you want um it'll work uh if you have got i've got basically i think i have yeah uh so i've got 2.71 so it's gonna work fine uh, you don't need to enable the internal GPS, like if you're building a custom firmware. Um, I have, and you don't also need to enable Bluetooth. It's not necessary. You can, but this is only when you have the FR Sky Bluetooth module. And I think that that one is a bit different because you can rename it and all that kind of stuff. I I don't find that it's necessary. I've got both firm. I've, got, I've actually got all firmware of this. Uh, if we go into firmware, you can see I've got a bunch of firmware. Um, I've got the original that the model came with, uh, sorry, that the radio came with, and I've got a bunch of other ones where I've enabled GPS specifically, where I've enabled Bluetooth specifically, and I've got this one, which is just a no heli version for me. You really do not need um, the other stuff. And there's one final thing I'd like to show you. Um, I don't like the Edge TX logo and all that, so I'll make another tutorial soon on how to get this logo on Startup Radio Master. There we go. That's what we want to see. Um, or at least what I want to see. Um, so yeah, if you want that, I'll show you how to do that in the next one. Thanks for watching. Actually, one last thing before I let you go. Um, in order to make use of that GPS receiver that I've just shown you how to install in the radio, we do need something called uh, bi-directional telemetry um, for both iNav, um, Edge TX, and things like Express LRS or any other radio system that has telemetry. Um, because as far as I know, telemetry is only a one-way uh, stream of communication rather than a bi-directional one. I mean, we do have some form of it, um, such as the power output um, and stuff like that that we can read off from uh, our transmitter and have it as an OSD element, for example. But we don't have GPS, and if we could integrate GPS, that would be really amazing because it will open up a lot of possibilities in terms of things like return to operator rather than return to home. So it will take the last known GPS location from your radio rather than uh, from your... Um, home position which is currently defined as where the plane takes off um, and it will have other features like follow me and stuff like that so there's lots of possibilities that uh, these radios enable us to do and um, I'd really like to thank Risto for all the help that he's provided um, in terms of how to configure the GPS as well as the um, fact that he's basically the TX-16 god um, you can find him he's got a special version of uh, the Yapu telemetry script. Um, if you have a look at that, you can have the Yapu telemetry showing your radio rather than the home position. It will basically show two locations and if you have a GPS fix, it will work. Um, but that's just on the radio. It doesn't actually send any location data to the drone itself. So the drone doesn't really know where you are. Um, only you know. So anyway, it's useful, um, but I think we can we can take it a step further, and I hope that the iNav and uh, Edge TX and Express LRS development teams have a look at this, and um, if they think that it's a good idea, then I'm really happy to help implement this in any formal way. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.